Okay, we're recording. I'm gonna do the AuthorTube newbie tag, which is about like two or three years old. And to hopefully it'll help you guys get to know me a little bit better and be some interesting content for you. So I've got a list of 12, 13 questions here. I'll post them in the description. The first question is, how did you find out about AuthorTube? I found out about it on Twitter originally. Um, yeah, it's just like as once you're on Twitter and in the writing community, people are always hustling, trying to promote themselves. So definitely heard about AuthorTube there. I've been wanting to make an AuthorTube channel for months, uh, but felt like it would always detract from my writing time and I was worried about that time suck. But now that we're in quarantine land, it seems like time to pick up another fun hobby. So the second question is what genres do you write in? So the majority of my work the last couple of years has been speculative fiction about climate change. So it also falls under the cli-fi uh, category, near future science fiction, sh trying to show the effects of climate change and predict them and talking about the ways uh, our world is going to be shaped by climate change will intersect with social justice issues. However, my novel Depart Depart also has some supernatural elements and that it's a ghost story. And I do have two fantasy stories coming out. One of them also could fall under the cli-fi fantasy umbrella that's uh, coming out this summer. It's called Sister Fly or Die. Um, and it's being published in a new journal and I'll I actually forget the name of the journal. So I'll look it up and let you guys know later when it's closer to coming out. I think it's coming out in June. The second fantasy story is just pure fantasy uh, and it's being produced by a for a podcast called The Overcast. So that's coming soon as well. My preferred like tense and point of view to write in is the third question. I write in a mix of present and past tense. My novel Depart Depart is told mostly in present tense, but with some flashbacks in past tense. And I like the use of tenses like that to show a clear delineation between um, current narrative and flashback but I often write in past tense for like the entire story. I mostly write in third person limited. That just seems to be very comfortable for me. I do have some stories that are first person, however. Mostly the short stories that I've published have been for adult audiences and my book that's coming out is for adult audiences, but I do have a YA novel, Sand and Swarm, that is with an agent right now and we're going through the revisions process. <laughs> Are you a planter, a pantser, a plotter, or planter? So for those who aren't in the community, this talks about sort of your writing process. Plotters have a really detailed plan for everything they're going to do and how their book's going to go. Da, 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 it's all lined out. Pantsers kind of fly by the seat of their pants. I'm a bit of a mix. I think I am a planter. When I started out, I was definitely more pantser. I have a vague idea of where the story is going to go, but I like to discover it along the way. The more literary what I'm writing is, uh, the more I tend to pants. The I did write Sand and Swarm, my YA big epic sci-fi adventure novel, pantsing, and then I had to go back and plot it and fix a whole bunch of plot holes because I had pantsed. And that's made me aspire to be more of a plotter. Like I think if I write something else in the future that's very like action heavy, mystery, um, intricate plot, intricate, you know, moving pieces that I will do more plotting in the future. So I don't have to backtrack the way I did for that book. Am I published, non-published, traditionally published, self-published? Um, I am published. I have um, a number of short stories available on the web. You can get in, in the web and in print. The links to those are at my website, which I'll link in the description. And my first book, Depart Depart, is coming out in September, so that will be my first published book. Uh, my publisher, question number six, my publisher for Depart Depart is called Stelliform Press. They're a new press focusing on speculative fiction about climate change, which was like a perfect fit for this book. And my agent for my young adult novel is Kirsten Wolf of the DeForio Agency, and she's awesome, and she really believes in that book, and um, it's been great working with her on it what can you expect like from this YouTube channel so I'm thinking I'll do updates on my work um, just anytime I'm working on something new kind of sharing that I'm assuming I'm gonna end up posting some spicy hot takes 
because that's kind of what I've become known for on Twitter and like how I've grown my audience on Twitter is just having hot takes and being kind of unfiltered about it. So that's worked for me on YouTube, maybe it'll be, or it's worked on Twitter, maybe it'll work on YouTube as well. I also wanna do book reviews of what I'm reading because I'm always reading and uh, it's fun to talk about books. And oh, okay, and kind of hopefully people won't think it's too weird. I feel like ASMR has become like more accepted. Like a few years ago I had to hide that I was really into ASMR and could not fall asleep without it. Um, but I love ASMR and I was thinking about doing something bookish with that um, and bringing in my like English teacher background because I was an English teacher for 10 years. So I was thinking like just reading like poems and literature that's in the public domain, like old poems and literature, and then maybe annotating them quietly or just talking about like trivia about the author's history quietly, um, something that people could fall asleep to. That's content I would love to see more of on YouTube, so I might make something like that. When did I start writing? Like as long ago as I can remember. My grandfather was a novelist. He never got much success, but he did publish a few novels in his lifetime, more successful than I've been, certainly. Uh, and my dad is an academic writer, so my dad would like go in his study and work on his books when I was a kid. So writing books was, my house was full of books. Everyone around me wrote books. My mom worked on a book when I was in high school. Um, she was a principal and a teacher and she ended up writing a book about teaching. So definitely a very literary culture that I came from and I was always wanting to be a writer and always wanting to write books, always fiction. What was your first story? I remember when I was five, I really put a lot of work into like my first book. I was obsessed with rubies at the time. I thought diamonds were BS, but I thought like rubies were like what was up. Like red was a very cool color. So it was about um, Princess Ruby who lived in a ruby forest and had a horse named Ruby and she went out and got a lot of rubies. And I was very, I guess, motivated by shiny colorful objects back then, so. I mean, minerals are cool. All right, number 10 is what authors inspire you the most. Uh, there would be way too many to mention, but probably the most influential. There's a group of really powerful, darkly funny, speculative fiction short story writers that I admire, including Kelly Link and Karen Russell. And I'd also put Linda Berry in that category, even though a lot of, um, she's a graphic novelist, so a lot of her work is graphic as well. Um, lately I've been into speculative fiction that's really political and like socio-political and so I've been reading um, as much N.K. Jemisin as I can get my hands on and River Solomon is amazing in that category. Um, in terms of what I call like cli-fi, climate change focused fiction, Margaret Atwood is of course a pioneer and if you read my story The Propagator you'll see like a lot of Margaret Atwood influence in there. And a few years ago I read, uh, last year I guess, I read The Overstory by Richard Powers which is a book, a giant book about trees and it really changed my life. It, it was the most ambitious and like deeply researched and beautiful book that I'd read in a really long time, maybe ever. It'll change the way you think about trees forever. And someday I wanna write something like that. I'm not that ambitious yet, but like that really is something to aspire to, that book. Oh, and also I wrote down, I just think the writers of Star Trek Next Generation was like hugely formative to me in my uh, like worldview and what I think science fiction should be and what I, want the world to be and so Star Trek Next Generation for sure huge influence when do you write um do you schedule it so I started writing after I was a teacher and an administrator in like a really one of these like high stakes like drink the kool-aid charter school districts for 10 years and um I had gone to college for creative writing but that whole time I was working for that school district I did not write at all until um, when my daughter was born, I actually had a lot of medical problems and I had to quit my job. I was kind of forced out and I had to quit my job um, because I needed disability accommodations that they just like weren't really 
willing to provide. Uh, started writing during my baby's nap. So that was when I started, I was like, okay, this is it. I'm like not teaching anymore. I've got time, sort of, as a stay-at-home mom, like not really. Uh, oh, I do, I do go by mom, even though I'm a they, them. Um, so I would write during nap times, and then after bedtime sometimes, if I would like still had a bit of energy in me. And then on the weekends, like my husband would watch the baby for a few hours so I could go write. Um, and then October through February of this year was amazing because my daughter went to preschool and I was able to write like full time during the day when she was at preschool. So that was great. That was a few months. I wrote to part to part during that time. I wrote my book that sold. But uh, then the pandemic happened and now everybody's back home. Uh, we actually have my sister-in-law's family living with us too. So we are six people living in a two bedroom house. So I write when I can get a snatch of time in the office here. Um, you know, my husband is working for NASA nine to five still, and he is the only person getting a regular paycheck. So he gets first dibs on the office. And when he's able to take a break or, you know, I'll go in the baby's bedroom and shut the door if like my sister-in-law can watch the kids for a little while and I'll get some writing done that way. Um, how do you write? I write on a laptop, yeah. I've tried writing by hand, it doesn't work for me. I'm a millennial. Uh, what are you most looking forward to in AuthorTube? So the biggest thing is just like opportunities, connecting with the readership. Um, when I joined, I joined Twitter because I read like how to publish your book after I'd finished writing it and everyone was like, you have to be on Twitter as a writer and I would agree with that advice. So I got on Twitter and I played the dumb like tag games and well, this is a tag game, so I'm doing it again. I shouldn't say dumb also, that's ableist, don't say dumb. So I got on Twitter and originally felt really like, oh, I'm just doing this to hustle, it didn't like feel great, like I'm playing these silly games that I don't really believe in um, and aren't really my style. But uh, by doing that, I connected with the writing community, which has been so great. I found like really amazing beta readers and critique partners. I found my sensitivity reader for Depart Depart on Twitter. Um, he connected me with my publisher uh, for Depart Depart and I found my agent through Twitter. So, so many great opportunities have come to me through Twitter. Out Magazine reached out and Edutopia reached out for me to write articles for them on Twitter. So that's just been great. I've gotten so many opportunities. And I've made really great friends on Twitter, um, which I wasn't expecting. You know, originally it felt like this really capital, I don't, not capital, I don't know, like hustle culture thing. It, it felt inauthentic. And then it became a really cool way of connecting with other writers and readers and hearing what readers think about what you're posting. And so that's been really cool. And I'm hoping that YouTube will be that uh, just in a different format, you know, so... I'm excited about that. Uh, and that's all 13 questions. Some things I'm not excited about is seeing my hair. See how my hair is touching my ears? This is terrible. Uh, I'm going to make my husband cut my hair shorter again today because I don't like that. Uh, yeah, that's my AuthorTube newbie questions. And if you have more questions for me, you can leave them in the comments. Please subscribe and like this video because I'm brand new and I got to like boost up the Albert algorithm. So uh, help me, help me get boosted. Like, subscribe, comment. Yeah, all that stuff. Okay, bye.